Okay. Okay. Where am I going? You're going right here at Ben's farm. Okay. Yeah, we'll right oh my god, Ben's head's gonna explode. <laughs> Are we trying to send Joe some kind of message? <laughs> Is that green light in the water? Are we supposed to be in the high side? But maybe that was it. I like the elbow room. Oh, you want to watch it fast. We're good. Let's go. I'd like to call to order the uh, January 25th, 2018. Meeting of the uh, Scarborough Sanitary District Trustees. This is our regular monthly meeting. Roll call. Judith Cavallaro. Present. Joe Carroll. On an island all to myself. All by yourself. Far on the right. Or on the view as left. Right. Correct. Correct. Aubrey Strauss. Here. Ben Viola is absent with notice. Uh, Jason Greenleaf. Uh, expects to arrive late due to a schedule conflict. Nick Rico. Here. And I'm Charles Anderson. Next item is the approval of the minutes of the December 21st, 2017 regular meeting. Move to approve. Moved. Second. Seconded by Judy. Um, does anyone have any corrections, errors, or omissions to note? Audrey. I have just a couple minor things. Page three of the minutes, just below the sulfide monitoring table, second sentence, there are two email chains, C-H-A-I-N-S, not trains. Um, following page, page four, new business, letter A, first sentence, the proposed budget summary for 2018 uh, was included in the packet. It says is included, was included. It's just yep. was included. And not taken in personally. For page six, my last name is spelled wrong. <laughs> Under trustee comments. Really? S-T-R-A-U-S-E, not S-S. I'm sorry. That's it? No, it's okay. It's a weird name. You should get it right in the roll call. Um, at the top of page two, uh, this is the uh, first word, these two, two vote. So oh, delete yeah. one of the votes there. And on page three, uh, the last paragraph, first line, pro provided with a packet were copies of correspondence instead of was. And then in line four of that paragraph, uh, the this, uh, second sentence, it says, Glenn could, did not detect any owner. I think we just delete could from that sentence. And that completes my rotations. I think Aubrey already hit on page four. Anybody else? All right, if not, all in favor of the minutes as corrected. None opposed. One abstention. One abstention. Four, zero, and one abstention. Nick Rico. Nick was not at the last meeting. Okay, uh, Superintendent's Operations Report, Dave. Okay. Um, copy of the monthly report of operations for the month of December is included in your packet. Uh, our average effluent flow for the month was 1.16 million gallons per day. 
Our FM quality, again, was well within our permitted limits. Uh, with that, we averaged 96 percent uh, BOD removal and 98 percent total suspended solids removal with concentrations of 13 and 8 milligrams per liter respectfully. Attached is also uh, a copy of the annual summary of our operations. Last year we treated 490 million gallons of wastewater from which we removed a total of 95 percent and 97 percent of the BOD and TSS respectfully. A summary of the past years follows. Uh, one thing, as I noted last year, is the trend in the increase in the influent concentrations. So the, although our flow is not changing significantly over the last few years, there has been an increase in our strength of the wastewater coming into the field. Can I ask a question on that? Mm -hmm. Just, um, Is our influent flow measured uh, and sampled downstream from where we introduce the septage uh, into the system? Yes. I'm wondering if increased uh, gallons of septage over the year might be contributing to that, to that increase. I'm not sure. I, I didn't have historical records on septage that was handled, but that might be something to take a look at. Yeah, actually, I think... Um, to I thought I had a septage table, but I guess I don't. Well, you, do, you, um, you had one for, um, you had one for uh, 2017 mm -hmm. in the packet somewhere, but there was nothing, there was no historical data yeah. that you can yeah. beyond that. Um, but it seemed like 300,000 gallons of septage was an increase over what we had done a few years back. I actually think we've had, had, a, have had a decrease in septage. Is, is, Really? I have given give an answer, but I certainly will check that and get the report back to you. Okay. Um, I, I was just racking my brain trying to figure out where the concentration increases were coming from, other than possibly more low flow fixtures. Well, that's, that's where, where I think it's coming from. We're getting a lot of uh, uh, connections of new uh, properties and all the new construction meets the low flow requirements. So um, we're getting just stronger away from the result of that. Yep. Uh, one thing I've done in the past, but I've never reported on, I thought it'd be, uh, the trustees would be interested, is the cost of treatment of conveying and treating of our wastewater. Last year, uh, we averaged less than one cent per gallon. Uh, it comes out at uh, $0.0073 dollars per gallon. Uh, this is based on the total flow we treated and our total budget, including operations, debt service, and capital expenditures. So, you know, I think that's a testament to the industry as a whole, um, how we how uh, we are cost effective in what we do. Um, attached is an annual report of our, on our composting operation. Last year, we generated uh, three million one hundred ninety-five cubic yards of compost. 3,195 cubic yards of compost. Uh, despite the ongoing sludge hauling pilot study, the amount of compost generated in 2017 was similar in past years because of a lag between sludge generation and compost disposal. So mm -hmm. the next year will be significantly different. Um, we are now six months into the, the sludge hauling pilot study. And by all reports, it is going well. To date, we've spent 68300 on sludge hauling disposal. This rate will be at an annual cost of approximately $140,000, which is within the range of cost I had estimated in, in June. I had given a range of $120,000 to $160,000 per year. Um, this, the district historically spends approximately $150,000 a year on composting based on our annual audit. Uh, this past year, uh, there were a total of eight uh, plugging events of, uh, at our pump stations, two of which were attributed to uh, wipes. Uh, as you may recall, wipes have had been a bane uh, for us for a period of time with causing several, uh, many plugging events at our pump stations, but uh, people seem to be well educated at this point and um, doing a good job, not flushing them. Thank you. Uh, a copy of the pump station flows for the month of December is included in the packet. The last meeting, Mr. 
Anderson had requested that I check into uh, the past blockage at the industrial parkway pump station. At that time, I couldn't recall any, nor could Carl, after I had, uh, was checking with him. Uh, we did have a recent force main break in that general area that occurred at the bus depot. So. Um, Rudy has completed his third course of the Jetsy Management Training School. Again, this is that 11-month training program. Uh, that is in its ninth year. And DEP has once again requested for me to teach two of the classes at this year's Wastewater Operating School. It's, uh, the first will be on February 15th, coming up in um, a couple weeks, and will be about uh, preliminary treatment and headworks. And the second on June 21st, the nitrification and denitrification. Uh, Glenn usually helps me out on the nitrification, denitrification one. And um, um, thinking I'm going to see if I can get Scott to give me a hand on the headworks analysis. I haven't talked to him yet, so hopefully he's not watching. We should take note that uh, Jason Greenleaf arrived uh, at. Uh, seven seven forty ten minutes late. My apologies for late. Okay, we got your we got your uh, message that you might be delayed slightly, <laughs> and we appreciate the notice. Thank you. Thank you for joining my island. <laughs> Joe feels better now. <laughs> <laughs> notice you didn't sit right next to him. Oh. Got something going on here. Uh, any questions for the superintendent on the operations report? Bobby. I have two questions. I guess so. Um, on page one, you talked about the cost of treatment, and you calculated that. And I'm just wondering if you have any idea how that compares to other local facilities of similar size or types of communities. I don't know that a lot of utilities do this. I don't know if you have any idea. Um, I think I've done it in the past, and and it, it's it, it's within the range. If it's on the better side of the range that I've seen, I certainly could start at, uh, looking around. I think it's a I think it's something that we do a very poor job as an industry marketing. Exactly. That's why I was um, you know, people will go out and spend you know two dollars for this bottle of water, but um, you know, not realizing how efficient we are at treating it, conveying it, and treating it. So we're pumping it quite a long ways. That's exactly what I was thinking. It's definitely something that our industry should highlight more: the effectiveness of the treatment. And the second question, uh, you always include the pump station flows, and I wondered if you had any insight on what happened at the industrial parkway pump station. Like, was that because of the water main break? But I don't imagine it could have been. It's just a You're talking about that high flow? High, yeah. Yeah, there was right. one high Vibration. flow there. And we have been chasing that for a period of time. We haven't found the source of that. It's, it's sporadic. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've TV'd the, the entire area. We didn't find any significant breaks. Um, and we'll find it eventually. It's just. Yeah, I know you've been chasing it for a while. That's yeah. the same one, correct? One, yeah. 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 There's like two stations that tend yeah. to have the. Well, one pumps right into the other. They're within. Yeah. Gotcha. Quarter mile <clears throat> gotcha. All right, that's all I had. Thank you. Thanks. Mr. Chairman, just in answer to uh, Aubrey's questions, first. Uh, when I took a tour of PWD, they had something on the order of it cost a penny to produce a gallon of water to drink and a dollar to treat that same gallon once it came back to them. A penny versus a dollar? Yeah. A penny to produce the water and a dollar to treat it. The wastewater. Treat the wastewater. Yeah, yeah and I think, I think every system is going to be different. It depends on configuration of your system, the expansive geography, mm -hmm. numbers of pump stations, you know, every, I think every system would be different. I don't, I think everybody produced that number, it wouldn't mean one system was necessarily a more lot efficient more efficient than right. another. Yeah. But I think it's a nice range of numbers to know mm -hmm. as a benchmark, just to be able to see where you stand cost-wise to. Yeah. And following up on Aubrey's question on the high flow at Industrial Park, Way. I'm wondering, it's uh, are any of those businesses there working with tanks? It, it looks almost like someone drained a pool or drained a tank. That'd be a, a very big pool. It would uh, be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or a very big tank. Yeah. Um, I, I honestly think it's probably um, some type of 
drain uh, or groundwater coming in at on a private side okay. that happens to be you know at a very high elevation yeah. that only trips during extreme events. Is, oh, so was that during the yes. storm? Okay. Do we think it's possible? Do we think it's possible that it could be coming from a private side that we're not seeing? Yeah, I, I, I agree at this with point. This. Yeah, I mean you 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 TV'd everything on our side. Mm -hmm. I, I really do think it's on uh, in the private private section that you know we just just impossible for us to get our cameras up. Right. So um, <clears throat> would it be was it possible that some of those lines or some of the streets where our lines were were they flooded at all that, during that storm? They could have been. I don't recall them any of the streets being flooded, okay. and you know, unfortunately, you don't notice it until the you, next right. day. You don't go so. around during a storm looking at the system unless you have to. Yeah. I guess Just the one last accident that was during a wet weather event was it a high tide event, and is it a location where there could have been influence of the marsh into the line? Like if you had essentially infiltration? I'd have to look at it. I don't believe we have any major private developments pouring into that section. Is that correct? No, it's all it's it's all it's, it's basically single residences. industrial park. Um, you know, uh, there's no major. It's all individual services. Is this the one next to public work yard? <clears throat> That's just, it's the one by, I'm going to sound like a true leader, the old Herman shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't in Scarborough then. <laughs> Nor no was I. The industrial. Southgate Road. Southgate Road, thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> do you, Mr. Chairman, Superintendent, do you think it's possible to reach out? to the couple businesses that immediately dump into the Southgate Drive station to uh, ask to we, you know, we, TV or whatever? We already have knocked on some doors, and we'll continue that activity. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Okay. Other questions? Good. Yes, Joe. Just with the uh, sledge hauling, um, just because we're in the off months, I would say. Do you think this is uh, obviously within goal of your projections, mm -hmm. but do we expect uh, as spring and summer moves forward that this will remain within those projections, or do you expect as the season changes us to increase? I expect it to be within those projections. Uh, we're actually coming out of the uh, our sludge our high sludge production period um, that uh, end of the summer into the fall is really when we generate a lot of sludge. Surprisingly, it's it's right on par. So that's yeah. great. Thank you. All right, let's move on to correspondence. Ability to serve at 12 Pine Point Road. I provided an ability to serve letter to the Pine Point Animal Hospital with regards to the proposed 720 square foot addition for a new office, surgical preparation area, bathroom, break room, and work area. The proposed use of the building is not changing and it will continue to function as an animal hospital. It is not anticipated that the additional allocation above the current allocation of 160 gallons per day is needed. So um, it w that at this point, this won't come in front of the board. This is just a planning department. Any questions? So, so with the addition, that's not changing their gallons per day no. requirement. So at that point, we're not... Uh, just thinking about the uh, strength waste, given their business occupancy, granted it's not grease and fats and such, but uh, um, at that point we, we can't really ask them to do anything for additional filtration or anything. No, I mean they have not. Um, 
the animal hospital has, has historically been a low flow. I, I've, I checked their, their flow records and stuff like that. They're, I have no concern in regards to their flow. Right, great, thank you. Facility. They're not even changing uh, the number of veterinarians or employees. It's really just to make workflow nicer. Okay, moving on. Uh, old business, uh, solar energy. Uh, Ms. Strauss had requested that I look into the possibility of utilizing solar energy at the wastewater treatment facility. Uh, as you may recall, I had done this back in March 2016 at the request of uh, Trustee Garrison. At that time, I worked with Com Competitive Energy Service, and the end result was there was no payback. Well, things have gotten a little better. Uh, as a result of Ms. Strutt's request, I contact uh, Guggen Energy, I think it's pronounced, uh, to do a similar evaluation, which I included in your packet. Um, this is just a preliminary review to determine if we want to look any further into it. Uh, the end result is it's a 16 to 18 year payback uh, with the panels that have a life expectancy of about 50 years. This would be approximately a um, two, excuse me, a two million dollar project after rebates and tax incentives, and would require the district to go under contract with a vendor who would own their array and would be required to purchase the power back from them. The system, as proposed, would essentially provide 100 percent of the wastewater treatment facility electrical needs based on an annual average. So we'd have. Um, some bills during high energy periods and, and none during others. So um, it's up to the board. I can continue this analysis, uh, come back to it, uh, reach out to another vendor, or um, stop, uh, stop at this point. So um, it wasn't clear to me just looking at the packet that you sent mm -hmm. what the cash flow situation from the district's perspective would be if we would elect to work with a vendor like this? I did not go that far. I could establish a cash flow schedule okay. uh, with, the, with the vendor to see how that would work out. And is the, is the assumption that we're working under then that the district's upfront cost would be $2 million to make this project work? Yeah. Mm. Mr. Chairman. Um, Dave, are you, are you aware if this is the same company that uh, the town has been working with in some of their other facilities or not? I don't know. I don't know who they is, actually. I'm just wondering if, uh, I know with the North Scarborough Fire Station, they install solar panels on, on the east side of the building, that if it, and I know they're looking to do some additional uh, solar projects on the municipal buildings, if it would behoove us to reach out to the town and see who they're using and maybe possibly even get on a, a bid project that they're working with um, to see how that equates in in reference to uh, what we already have proposed in front of us. I can do that. Have you I can. talked about this project and uh, the financing there and how that worked? Yeah. That would probably be a good conversation for you to have with him at some point. That would be a good conversation. Right now, we built a solar array that creates 150 kW. It will power our treatment plant. 20% uh, of our power will be provided by the sun. Um, our initial investment was less than $5,000 to provide excavation across the parking lot for the power connection. And Revision Energy built the whole thing on their dime for about $448,000. At the end of the six-year tax credit rebate period, they will sell me that array for less than half the cost at about $170,000. And that's when the clock starts <coughs> ticking for the payback period. And within five years of that time when I buy it in 2024, it'll pay itself back. But that payback already begins now because they sell me power at less than 11 cents per kilowatt, which is an effective rate, which is lower than what I pay our supplier for power from the pole. Do you, do you have any idea how much you're going to save um, 
in power costs? About 3000 per year. 3000 per year. Yeah, and, and in fact, I think I sent a summary of the payback period to Dave in a spreadsheet. Yeah. Um, 11 cents a kilowatt hour, does that include delivery? Yes, I mean the, the delivery is what no, 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 three hundred no. feet. No, your no 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 no. no your, yeah. your cost to see him, uh, to buy power. To buy power, the effective kilowatt rate is higher than eleven cents per per kilowatt for delivery and supply combined. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll I'll reach out to the town who they used. I'll um, you mentioned Revision Energy. I know that you had all the point. There's another good um, company that we looked at, and that was Maine Solar Solutions. Um, the only reason we went with Revision was they provided a stationary system, whereas um, Maine Solar wanted to give us a tracking system, which you know was it is more efficient because you can create the same amount of power with fewer panels because these panels will track the sun throughout the day and they'll tilt and track it throughout the season. So they're more efficient in gathering sunlight. Um, the trustees and wells were a little leery about something that moved and the maintenance of that. You know, the beauty of the power purchase agreement is revision builds the whole thing, or Maine Solar would have built the whole thing. We don't pay much at all. We buy the power, and in seven years, you know, for the first seven years, we don't do any of the maintenance either. All we got to do is get the snow out of the way for them to go out there. That's it. Some of these are tracking, right? Yeah, they, they looked at tracking and <coughs> non-tracking, and they also based it on um, different two different, well, two different vendors. And uh, one vendor had a 50-year life, 50 life panel, the other one had to get the, the life panel. Um, and the um, one of the things that we have, you know, at this point, we have such a, uh, an attractive uh, uh, electricity rate it, at our current rate. It's, it, it makes it difficult. Uh, but our, our rate, it's going to change, obviously, over time. Um, but at our current rate, it, it, it's pretty good. You know, it's, we have a very good rate. You know, the other thing to consider is, you know, the system that we had built was designed by revision, and it only powers the, uh, it only provides about 20% of the power, you know, but on a day like today with full sun, I look at the graph on our skater system, um, 7.30, 8 o'clock, the CMP power goes to zero, and it doesn't start creeping back up until maybe two, you know, so three or four hours. During our peak time of power use, it goes away. So instead of getting a system with 630 kilowatts, maybe consider getting something maybe a third the size just for power shaving. Yeah, I mean, we could look at it different, in different ways. We could either look at a, a, a full array full, or just uh, uh, put them on the southern faces of the two buildings with roofs that face south. Mm. Which would be the uh, sludge building and the admin building. Um, starting to put in the lawn area. Start to use you know, valuable real estate. You got other things to take, take into consideration. That that was my question. Was looking at the schematic there that was drawn. Was are we using up too much valuable real estate? Yeah, I, this well, or? and that that this arrangement that's there now, I I, I wouldn't. I think it's too much yeah, amount of space. When we talk about potential for expansion. Yeah, you know, that, you know yeah. this was the first five I effort at it. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's going to help us fine tune our analysis on how we want to take a look at it. Um, I think 100% uh, solar energy is is not feasible. Um, you know, maybe what we need to do is step back and decide. You know, fix mounted on the on the two buildings. And leave it at that. See what we get out of it, and see what the payback on that is. I mean, phasing might be the approach to take. Um, starting small, the other thing to look at, again, instead of building something that will power the whole plant, just power some of it, um, you know, and the payback period may not be 16 years, might be more like seven or eight. And that, that's definitely worth looking into. 
And you know, yeah, um, the track and the tax credits don't do anything for us. None at all. No, that's so. Why. So in the economic analysis with tax credits, um, it seemed to me the tax credits would favor the company that was going to build and install this, and if the agreement was correct, that they would accrue the tax credits over yes. a period of time, That's which, right. would defray, exactly. which would defray our upfront costs and also our final costs. At, <clears throat> at some point, we'll have a cash outlay to purchase the system once they've used all the tax credits that they're going to get. That's right. And, and at that point in time, we would recoup some of those tax credits by reducing the price that we'd end up having to pay for the system. So I think that would be more... Um, in line with my thinking is a way to try and structure a deal to go forward with, mm -hmm. uh, with the project. I think it's worth continuing to pursue. I'm not sure it's worth continuing to pursue with Goggin Energy right now unless they indicate there's some other there's some other considerations that they give us for the tax credits and another ownership type of configuration. But I think if you talk to the company that did uh, Nick's uh, Yep. Project and explore some more. I think it's worth pursuing. I don't. Mm -hmm. I think you can tell these folks our energy is peak, but we need to do more due diligence mm -hmm. on. It. And I do have a brochure that lays out the essentially what Nick just talked about. It's a brochure for municipal and nonprofit facilities. I have that for you. Our, our current provider, I assume, is CMP. No, we we purchase our energy. Um, Competitive energy, I think it, it was okay. the, the, the firm. Have we received any notice of the anticipated increase? No. no. Okay. Um, and that, and that's so variable. Right. I just know that it was, you know, it's at the POC, PUC right now mm -hmm. for anticipated increase. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> My only other comment, uh, going off uh, the chairman's uh, responses, you know, as far as Guggen goes, uh, Goggin, um, is to see what their number would look like, obviously without the tax incentives because mm -hmm. it doesn't apply, and then looking into the whatever the town is already using for a vendor and possibly the other two vendors the other trustees have mentioned. Yep. Okay. Thanks. So you'll continue to I'll pursue con this. I'll and continue to you know let, let, as I say I, I wanted to put it in front of you and see get some better direction on how to move forward with it and. Uh, uh, we'll go from that. Thank you. I just wanted to add, like, even though I know that the, the project that's outlined here, the scope of that is way beyond what we were looking for, I'm still kind of surprised, pleasantly surprised, to see the payback period is much shorter than I was thinking it would have been, even for that larger project. So it's encouraging. Well, as I say, you know, just two, three years ago, there was no payback. There was nothing in right. Did they use our? Did they use our current rate? Yes. Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. It is encouraging. What's that? It is encouraging. It'd just uh, be nice to see what those numbers look like without the taxes. Uh, okay, moving on. Uh, Pine Point Road odor issues. Uh, we continue with the interim sodium sodium hydroxide addition to control the odors due to the hydrogen sulfide generation, uh, which continues to be successful. We have also added potassium permanganate tablets at the uh, terminus manhole of pump station one. Uh, this is a secondary measure to further reduce um, odors in the system. Our odor logger has been sent back for calibration uh, with a month's worth of no uh, appreciable hydrogen sulfide measurements. I thought it was timely to send this piece of equipment back for its scheduled service. So right now, that's why there are no uh, uh, results for you, but I'm comfortable that there are no issues out there right now. Um, I've had no interaction with any residents from the Pine Point area regarding odors. Uh, nobody's reached out to me. Uh, Ready Seafood has hired their contract, ordered the equipment, and pulled the needed permits and are now in the process of um, uh, uh, then they're ready to install the uh, design system. So they've got a contractor on order and they're just waiting for um, some, a well window and we'll be at it. And uh, what in current is finalizing the design? I should be seeing that shortly. And then we'll hire a contractor and start to work on that. Questions? Mr. Chairman, I was just curious how the sodium hydroxide is delivered. Do 
you have uh, just a pump at a station with a drum, or? No, I have Rudy Hale. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we do. Um, we, we are doing bulk addition of the caustic once a week. Okay, so, so essentially you're you're putting it in the wet well and then it chemically pigs the force yep, main. Yeah, we're doing a plug. Excellent. And it's uh, using thirty gallons of twenty five percent caustic. Mm hmm. Good. So. Good. Uh, this. Oops, Joe. Being the non-engineer from the. Uh, the sanitary world, um, potassium pentanganate. Um, can you explain the, that addition? Uh, potassium pentanganate is an oxidant, a very strong oxidant, and it's um, it's, it's got an industry nickname called purple power. Um, it's and it, it's uh, it, it it will um, oxidize uh, any of the sulfides that are in the wastewater. And so the way that we have it set up is it comes in these hard tablets and it, uh, we have um, a mesh net bag uh, that we, we um, install uh, a couple pounds of the tablets in. And as the flow goes by, it erodes the tablets. And over time, the tablets just will drop down into, into the wastewater and that's how it's added. And, and that, that's, as I say, it's a secondary measure of of uh, oxidizing the um, the hydrogen sulfide, the caustic is actually preventing, the, you know, prevents the generation of the caustic of the sulfide. So we're addressing it in two different <coughs> fashions. So uh, does that help? No, it helps greatly. Thank you. Uh, and the permanganate is in the gravity system at yeah. the discharge of the of the force mass. Correct. Yeah. So we're adding it at two different locations, too. One at, right at the pump station and one at, at the top of the hill. And I'm assuming this is hopefully a temporary measure until the engineering and the, yep. the work can be completed. Um, so are we, thinking, are we thinking installation of our odor control system in March? That's what I'm hoping for, yes. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, new business, um, budget summary. You got the 12-month budget summary uh, in your packet. I recommend approval. Move okay. approval, Mr. Chairman. Second. Um, one question, um, under capital expenditures were um, underexpended by $122,000. And my question was, was that savings on projects that we did or is that work that we've deferred until that the, the, the new budget year. Um, I, I, didn't give a, me any, yeah. I didn't give you any warning. Yeah, questions. I'm going to have to get back to you. I think it's a combination of both. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I believe there was some work that we had anticipated doing, and we chose actively chose not to do it. And then there are some things that we came uh, several well, that we came under budget. So it's a, it's a combination. Of okay. Both. So um, I'll give you time to think about it. Um, I'm just curious whether we're going to spend some of that 122,000 to accomplish projects that we just didn't finish in the in this fiscal year, or whether or whether you've decided not to pursue those for the time being, and that any projects that have have um, any that have moved forward, and uh, the painting of the clarifier is one of them uh, that we changed. We didn't do two clarifiers because we bought some weirs. Mm -hmm. yep. So I actually, in this year's budget, has that number for the painting and the clarifiers in there. It's not yeah. going So to we're really where I'm, where I'm, what I'm at, where I'm trying to get at is, we have $263,000 remaining um, at the end of the fiscal year from mm -hmm. our operating and capital budgets. Mm -hmm. And we typically carry that money, the anticipated excess, over to apply to the new to the budget in the new fiscal year. And I'm just wondering where we are with regret, what that 263,000 means to the current year budget. Is there a savings there for us, or have we already programmed all of it? In? So you can look you can look at that and just let me know. Any other questions? All those in favor to accept the 12-month budget soon. Unopposed. Okay. And 
public comments, those who have to send them from home. Uh, trustee comments. Check. Mm -hmm. No comments, sorry. <coughs> Judy? Yes. I'm very pleased that the weather has finally broken, that we got through that. It's been five degrees today. Three weeks. <laughs> yeah, but we had three straight weeks of that. And I saw something that I've never witnessed before, which was several of my neighbors buying um, diesel fuel at the filling station in five gallon, putting it in so they could run their furnaces. I have yes. never, ever seen that before. Uh, two of them said their oil companies would not come. They must not have a contract like I do because I don't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. But they spent a lot of time going back and forth. Five gallons is like one day of heat. Mm -hmm. So I hope I don't have to see that again. So we'll all think spring. Well, I think it's a little more pricey buying it that way also. But, uh, well, it has to be. Well, you've got to pay the road tax on it unless you can buy it, unless mm -hmm. you can buy it uh, for the off-road. Mm -hmm. Price somewhere, and I don't know what they'd sell it to you that way to take on, you know, five gallon drums. So, yeah, yeah, it's been a, it's been a uh, really record, record breaking cold snap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're happy to see it's going to break a little bit. And my, my pulse from uh, talking with a couple of the guys that I bumped into during the last couple of weeks of our of our staff <coughs> is that there were no monumental problems for us uh, caused by the cold and uh, so. No, our septage receiving station froze up for the first time ever. Um, and we had one uh, water meter break at one of our pump stations um, that we had to we shut the water off. And we'll take care of that later. Yeah. <clears throat> Audrey. I will just sort of add on to Judith's comments. The other record happening right now is illness in the state of Maine, the flu. Um, it hit my office hard over the last two weeks, so I just would like to make a sort of a public service announcement. We haven't gotten a flu shot, even though it's not a great match for the strains that are in this year. As I it's cough. not funny. Yeah, thanks for the spreading the germs down there. That's why nobody was sitting there. Um, even though it's not a great match, it is still going to reduce the severity and intensity of the flu if you get it. So stay, you know, get the, know. get the, I, my office was, we all missed our performance reviews because we were all sick. Um, and wash your hands, you know, wash your hands often, sneeze into sleeves, common sense things really can keep you healthy and your coworkers healthy and your family. So that's if all you're I sick, stay home. And if you're sick, stay home. Joe. I'd just like to thank the superintendent and the staff for the continued efforts. Um, and congratulations to Rudy for completing his last course and to the superintendent again for being asked to teach. Um, and uh, finally, uh, just my thoughts and prayers for Francine and her loss right now. Thank you. Yes, like the ditto of those comments in terms of uh, the staff and coming in under budget again this year. Great to see. Uh, again, uh, heartfelt. Condolences to Francine and her family. And uh, also want to apologize for being a bit late this evening, but I did, uh, in being late, I was able to witness a fantastic performance by the sixth grade band. So uh, kudos to them for putting on a great performance tonight. Mm -hmm. um, again, I'd like to thank our staff for all the diligent work and effort on behalf of the district and uh, echo the kudos. Uh, Joe said, "I think um, I don't think he, I think I don't think Rudy's done with this. He's, not, he's, he's got, not done. He's, he's just got eight more classes to attend. Eight more classes. So he goes for one a month for right. one a month for eleven months. Yep. Um, Good progress. Still. That's a great. That's a great uh, undertaking. So wish sure you continued success there. And uh, also condolences to Francine. Uh, very sorry for uh, their loss. It's always difficult." Uh, no matter what the circumstances, when you lose a parent, and uh, so uh, on behalf of the trustees, our collective condolences uh, to her. And with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? None opposed. We are adjourned. Okay.